Hey, what is going on, guys? This is the SS Ultimate Goku back with another video to do my Code Geass Rose of the Recapture Episode 11 English Dub Review. So the episode starts off with um, we see uh, Norlin in his, you know, big ass nightmare frame. Um, and uh, we see. Uh, uh, Norlin, uh, being, well, the clone of Charles, or his vessel, you know, um, it's kind of a very, uh, <laughs> uh, it didn't really describe it pretty well last week, but, uh, basically, um, cause I just called it a clone of Charles, but, uh, basically the way it is, is, um, it was like a vessel thing. Um, that, uh, basically, you know, Charles, I guess, created, um, and it was supposed to be implemented once the, uh, you know, their original plan with Marianne, um, was supposed to, uh, um, basically, they were, they were using him as a vessel, he was supposed to, he was a knight of, he was one of the knight of the rounds, and, uh, he had no... Like, once he was killed by Lelouch, that basically, you know, he basically was just an empty vessel. So that is the uh, weird and interesting uh, facts of uh, Charles, uh, or not Charles, of, uh, of Norlin, uh, the clone of Charles, uh, when he was younger, I guess. Um, but he is, you know, going to this plan. We see Ash trying to fend him off. We see Rose, you know, trying to come up with a plan, or Sakria trying to come up with a plan. Um, then we uh, see Gino, uh, Gino um, from Black Knights trying to uh, figure out uh, the, the next plan of action. And, uh, you know, what they're going to do next. And uh, you know, they're trying to evaluate their options. Um, so that's going on. Um, we also then um, we also see an interesting scene with uh, Hariko and uh, one of the you know one of the commanders for the Japanese. Um, and it was basically revealed that, you know, um, that is, uh, Hariko's father, or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the Japanese general's, uh, daughter is Hariko. Uh, and she basically asks to be second in command, um, because of her nightmare frame prowess. Um, I thought this was a bad move because, um, I don't think that she is that capable of it, uh, of being second in command, especially since she did lose not too long ago. Like, she hasn't really won a major battle yet um, in the series. Um, I mean, I, I know a lot of people have been saying Hariko is basically filling the Colin role, um, but... Colin was, like, legitimately a better pilot than Heidiko. Uh, you know, she won a lot of her battles right away. Heidiko really hasn't won a major battle yet, so her being second in command kind of doesn't make sense. And it uh, kind of just goes on her, uh, you know, well, the parent just sees potential in her, I guess. So I didn't really like this. Um, because, you know, I feel like someone who's experienced as a general would know this, that she really hasn't accomplished that much so far. Um, so, I don't know if this was a good idea uh, here. But she's appointed second in command. He gives her back the key to her nightmare frame. Um, and then we cut away 
And then we see Catherine, uh, who is now fighting Norlin. Um, Catherine uh, is a quite interesting character nonetheless, and I mean that more than just the... Uh, the boob shots that they have, which they did not show in this episode, surprisingly. Um, because her character is, um, you know, with what they did last season, or last episode, uh, with Catherine, you know, and the reason why she, you know, works with Norlin and how, you know, she, you know, you know, insists on, you know, the strong and whatnot. And then she just abruptly starts fighting him. Um, just because. Um, I, I guess she must have somehow heard about, you know, he wants to get rid of humanity. So <laughs> now she's like, oh, well, I don't like you because, you know, you lied to me about strength. Strength will. Yeah, um, I don't know where they're going with Catherine. Like, like the way her motive right there just didn't make sense. Uh, I mean, they ha I mean, I guess off screen she could have found out the truth, but I mean, we didn't really find anything out about her. Why she not all of a sudden is attacking Norlin? Um, so. Basically, um, Norlin easily defeats Catherine. He uses this laser shot, and it basically shuts down her nightmare frame. Um, and that's really the end of the fight. She's kind of upset about it, but that's the end. Um... We then see uh, Rose, uh, Sakria getting into a nightmare, um, and, you know, he trying to set coordinates to try to figure out how to shut down uh, Norlin's nightmare. Norlin's then just, you know, posturing in his glory at this point. Uh, we then see Rose eventually get, uh, or Sakura end up getting to the command center um, to where Norlin activated the nightmare frame. However, there's a security system that Norlin has to deactivate it, and because he wasn't Nor or, sh or she wasn't Norlin, then uh, basically their security shuts everything down. So Rose can't do anything. Uh, and so now he's trying to figure, or she's trying to figure out what she she he's gonna do um see uh missiles being shot you see a lot of firing uh to try and fend off these uh you know these nightmares that are like invading all the towns and stuff like that they tra do the little transforming thing and sp uh you know start getting ready to attack Uh, we then see one of the soldiers, um, sacrifice himself, um, for, to try and to destroy some of these, like, you know, bug nightmare frame things. Um, we see the sword go down in this big explosion. We also see a big shock from, um, Heidiko. You know, Heidiko doesn't know what to do. Again, this is another problem to why she should, why she second in command it makes no sense. Uh, she does take the sword and then starts to try and, you know, move on the, for the battle. Um, again, still fighting off these things. Destroyed one of them. But again, we see more Nightmare Frames trying to figure out what they're going to do to fight off these things. We also see then Sakura, the Empress, you know, basically, you know, basically put out a proclamation to everybody 
that um, the um, Charles, or I'm not Charles, uh, Norlin is the enemy, and that they need to fight her off, fight him off. Um, and uh, so that's her degree. I also should, I don't think I mentioned, but uh, Norlin Vaughn is actually the reason why Rose was able to get to that command center, by the way, um, too. We didn't mention that, but yeah, Norlin Vaughn was the one that got it her. Um, we also see uh, Kaguro Sugaragi uh, also made an appearance with the Black Knights uh, well earlier, you know, because she's now taking command of, well, she was taking command of no, no, no uh, negotiations, as we all know. So we did see her uh, while Rose was trying to get the command center thing. That was earlier in the episode. Um, we then see Ash con once again now f uh, confronting and fighting um, uh, Norlin. But uh, he's trying everything he can throw at him. But uh, unfortunately, he is too much. He has like now his big nightmare uh, yellow wing things out, uh, and he is just going relentless. Uh, Ash tries to um, avoid it by avoiding the uh, the purple. Um, shots like uh, Catherine got earlier in the episode, but unfortunately, after dodging a few of them, he actually had some like in the chest and the head, and uh, because of that, Ash was not able to avoid it. The nightmare frame gets shut down, and then uh, what happens next is he uses again those yellow wings to fly all the way up, and then basically throw him down to basically try and kill him uh, that way, because again, the nightmare frames are shut down, so Ash can't really do anything, so he's basically going to just die to his death, at least we assume. But the episode ends that way. Um, uh, we do see Rose Sakria, you know, calling out to him um, because she's obviously concerned. Uh, and that's how the episode ends. So we don't know if Ash is about to die, but... Um, that is how the episode, unfortunately, ends. Um, overall, obviously this episode was to show that, uh, you know, the villain is dominating here. Um, so obviously, hopefully our heroes can turn it around in the next episode. Um, still no Colin uh, in this episode. Like, I mean... Oh, and I should also mention um, in this episode, because I don't think we uh, talked about it, but uh, Ash and Rose were able to shut down the barriers uh, within um, Neo-Britannia's, you know, Japan or whatever. Um, so those are out. So maybe that opens up a possibility for Colin now to get in there, which I still don't know how Colin has not appeared in this series yet. It just doesn't make sense. Colin, you know, the way she's fought for Japan in the previous season, she should have been already included in this uh, series by now. Kind of ridiculous, if you ask me. Um, so hopefully we see her in the next episode. I mean, like, come on. How do you not... How do you put all these other characters in there, but you don't put Colin in here? Who has the most attachment to Japan over everybody else does. She literally was fighting for Japan more than anybody was in the original series. Um, I just, I don't get it. Um, but nonetheless, um, I thought this episode was a good balanced episode um, for what it was. Um, hopefully Ash doesn't die. Um, the, uh, the only things really that just didn't make sense to me was how you make, um, you make Hideko second in command of the army, which doesn't make sense because, I mean, 
she really hasn't proven herself. She's proven that she can pilot the nightmare frame, the best nightmare frame they had, but she hasn't really proven that she's like an elite, you know, she's an elite uh, pilot. I mean, I don't think Heidiko is on Colin's level. I don't think she's on uh, Suzaku's level, especially since she was easily defeated not too long ago. Uh, against, I believe she fought. She fought Catherine a couple episodes ago. She couldn't beat Ka uh, Catherine. Um, so I don't know how you could say that she's like on an elite level, um, because I, do, <laughs> Colin and Suzaku would have beaten Catherine. Uh, we know that. Like those were elite pilots. Um, so I don't know how you can make her second in command just because you're her parent. Um, and then my other issue was this whole thing with Catherine herself. Like, you know, we see, we found out about her origins and why she stands with Norlin, but yet all of a sudden now she's, like, with no reason because, I mean, like, like what tipped her off now all of a sudden? It's like, oh, yeah, he was just doing all this to wipe out humanity. He doesn't care about you. <laughs> he doesn't care about you. But, you know, he would always put in her head the strong survive, right? So, I don't get that point at all. Like, there was no real explanation to why Catherine, like, just decided to fight. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, let's fight. You know, I don't let you, you, you lied to me about the strength. <laughs> uh, so, those were the two things that kind of were like, what? Um... But I thought this the episode was balanced pretty good on what they wanted to do here. They wanted to show Norlin's dominance in this uh, before, you know, taking him down. Um, so that's what they that's what they really covered here. That's what they majority covered here was that Norlin wanted to show his dominance. Um, and uh, yeah, that is the review sure to comment, rate, if you like this video in my videos, please subscribe, hit that notification bell for all the latest contents. Thank you. And that's all about it. I am the S. Ultimate Goku, moderate. Peace! Also, make sure the YouTube channel, the Twitch, the S. Ultimate Goku, Instagram, the S. Ultimate Goku, and do have Discord link in the description where we do talk about Code Geass and many other fictional media. Uh, and also, for discussions and also i do have a youtube tier membership list so make sure to check that out as well and now i'm out peace